Hey guys, welcome back to Quadratic. Today I'm doing a very quick tutorial to show you how to, in my opinion, increase the aesthetics of your quad, make it look a little bit better, and how to uh, improve the durability of these motor wires that are exposed on your arms. So this is uh, a bit of braid that we've put over the wires. I'm going to show you a really easy way of how to attach this, um, uh, sort of a, a little life hack if you want. Um, and we've also got some uh, shrink wrap on here that we heat up and... Um, it contracts on here, so we've got that shrunk around the motors on the end, and we'll do the same on this end once we've attached it to our ESC to stop these fraying, as you can see they are here. So, first thing you want to do is get your motors. Go ahead, uh, le I'll leave a few links to different braids online, but this is just a cheap one I got off eBay. I think it was about two quid for a couple of meters, and I think this is actually um, one or two millimeter diameter. So, this is going to be, as you'll be able to see from my other one, uh, only fit on individual wires. Uh, it can look good like this, it can also look really good if if you get all three wires in one braid so if you want to go for the uh, single braid go ahead get a uh, much thicker diameter wire than this because you'll be able to see this can only fit over one of the uh, wires at a time so all you want to do is simply uh, go ahead and measure it uh, pretty roughly because we're gonna uh, have to possibly trim these for the ESCs and things like that so go ahead measure that and then get your scissors and uh, just give it a trim there. So you'll see that that is pretty much the length uh, of uh, one of our wires. Now you can go ahead and uh, cut three of these. I decided to do uh, the middle one a different braided colour because if you're keeping up with my uh, Jungle Beast build video this is what we're doing on that. So this is sort of a, a more in-depth thing because I went over it very quickly on there. So go ahead cut your wires, um, cut your braids even for your wires and then once you've got your uh, motors out, if these are brand new chances are they'll probably be quite rubbery uh, and maybe have a little bit of um, sort of dust and stuff on them so you want, what you want to do first is go ahead um, and just simply this sounds a bit odd but simply just rub it quite a few times because you want to go ahead and uh, get some of your oils on there get a little bit of sweat as well uh, on there just so that you're sort of greasing up these wires effectively because it's just going to make for the slipping of this onto it a lot lot easier second thing you want to do is go ahead and get a wire that is uh, a lot smaller gauge than this get a much thinner wire but something that is going to be able to uh, solder on to the end of this like this so you'll notice this end uh, is quite thin and I wouldn't recommend something that thin but this one's a little bit thicker um, so we're gonna go ahead and solder that onto there and uh, you'll see why in a sec so we'll go ahead and do that now so we've gone ahead and soldered our wire onto there. This by no means has to be a clean job, but just make sure that you haven't got um, sort of any peaks in your solder or anything because that will possibly rip through this blade, uh, through the braid when we pull it through. So the next thing you want to do is get a little bit of uh, your heat shrink. And this, what I've got here is actually for ESCs. So it's a tiny little bit too thick for uh, the motor wires, but it still works quite well. And, and if you heat it high enough, it'll shrink down small enough. So I've just gone for clear so that we can still see the uh, braids at the very bottom of the motors. You might want to get a different colour, maybe black, so that the blade, uh, the braids sort of blend in uh, a little bit better. So anyway, once you've done all that, you want to go ahead, uh, this braid's usually packed quite tight, so just sort of uh, widen it out a tiny little bit by squeezing it, uh, and be careful at the ends because you'll be able to see that these do fray uh, quite easily, so I might need to replace this one uh, already. But after you've done that, um, go ahead and poke this tiny little wire in through here, um, and this is the reason you want to use a thick ish one because you want to be able to poke it all the way through uh, and thinner wires might not just have that uh, stability to be able to be pushed like that um, so you'll see just in a sec once we've almost got there uh, you can just see it poking out the end okay so there we go I've pulled it out through now all you want to do is simply uh, between pushing and pulling it just edge its way down here don't pull too hard because that solder will probably come loose uh, but this is where the sort of little bit of oil comes in use on here because that is just going to make sliding down there a whole lot easier so just keep pulling until you can see the end of it coming out uh, which we're almost there. Keep pushing it as well. Don't just rely on uh, just pulling it because that solder joint might come loose uh, because it's not 100% tight. And then you'll be able to see we've pulled it completely out. That is our first one done. Go ahead, desolder this. Uh, use it to solder back onto these. And then, uh, of course, um, don't forget to heat your shrink wrap up uh, so that that shrinks on there and stops these ends fraying. Now, a problem I usually have is uh, these ends do fray quite a little bit. It hasn't done it that bad on this one. Um, so I may suggest probably... Um, 
possibly adding a tiny little bit extra on this end so that once you've got it onto the thing, uh, which is the hardest part, you can maybe slice it off and then just cut away the braids uh, that way and then you'll have a uh, pretty nice clean cut on here when you can push it all the way back down. Um, and maybe doing the same on the end, maybe leave it a little too long uh, and then just snip it off very carefully without snipping the motor wire underneath. Um, but of course, you know, if you use that shrink wrap, then you're hopefully not going to be able to see uh, the ends fraying as you'll be able to see uh, from this one. You can't really tell what that is, uh, th that that's frayed at all. So anyway, this has just been uh, sort of a very quick guide, little tutorial to show you how to easily do this because I did struggle with this quite a little bit um, and I just found this sort of uh, little trick just to be able to do it. So anyway guys, thanks for watching. Uh, check out my build video. I'll leave a link in the description if you want to see me uh, putting this on the frame and I'll see you next time. Peace out.